ladies and gentlemen, for greater than six years, I have made it a point to study arbitration extensively. Since it was first brought to my attention by the young man who was part of the Bradley Christopher Stark um, private law, although I knew about arbitration, I didn't know about the Arbitration Act, never studied it, never cared. But once it was brought to my attention with Bradley Christopher Stark, Demetrius Hawkins, and Michael Rideout was able to do, of course, it was necessary for me to find out so that we could duplicate the issue. SAA has been vilified by the courts. They've said that SAA was fraudulent and a sham and a scam and all of these other things, but they have never once ordered SAA to stop doing business, nor has any of the courts ever followed the Federal Arbitration Act in attempting to sanction SAA. It's okay. We will be going after each of these courts very shortly. But what we're here to tell you is you don't need to go to the court to get approval of an arbitration award. But you've known that. IRS Tax Topic 453 makes it quite clear. So each of you who has an arbitration award and you haven't been able to get it confirmed, go and take a look at IRS Tax Topic 453. It says that if you have a debt, and we've done several videos on that, if you have a debt and you cannot collect, then you have the ability of receiving a deduction as long as you document and the arbitration award and the documentation of notifying the parties and the contract is your documentation. And once it's documented, the only thing you have to do is the appropriate 1099s. If you can't do it, if you don't know what you're doing, Amera Legion was set up just for that specific purpose, to help you all with those type of situations where you have a debt, but you don't know exactly the procedures and the process. Amera Legion helps create the record for you. So, you have an arbitration award. Now at SAA, each one of the arbitrators when they issue an award, they give a party 30 days to comply with the award. What happens if the party doesn't comply? What if they don't pay? What if they don't follow through with the orders of the arbitrator? Well, here is the law. The arbitrator has the power to award sanctions for any party who fails to comply with the orders of the arbitrator. Then you have this case here. The arbitrator may sanction any party, including ruling in favor of the other party, if appropriate, if a party fails to comply with applicable procedures and deadlines established by those arbitration rules. Then we have JAM. JAM says the arbitrator may order appropriate sanctions for failure to comply with its obligations, a party's failure to comply with its obligations, under any of the rules or the order of the arbitrator. Now, this California case claims that the arbitrator lacks the power to issue penalties against another party. But let's go down here for a second. We're going to go to another California case, and I believe it's this one here. This is another California case, 2015. The arbitrator may order appropriate sanctions for failure to comply with its rules and obligations and orders and so on and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to find a vast number of cases. I've only found one so far that says the arbitrator doesn't have that authority. However, let's do this. Let's show you what Judge Kavanaugh had to say. So give me one second, please. We're going to go through Henry Schein versus Archer and White Sales. Was Archer and White, no, Archer and White were the defendants. So Henry Schein versus Archer and White Sales. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to look up arbitrability. So let's go to this one. This is where Judge Kavanaugh, speaking on behalf of the court, says that the arbitrability issue is that the courts don't get to decide, and he says it up here, arbitrators are already capable and efficient of disposing of frivolous cases and determining frivolous motions, and such motions do not appear to have caused substantial problems with the circuits and are not recognized as holy groundless exceptions. But let's go to the second one. 
AT&T Technologies, this is the Supreme Court speaking as a whole unanimously, that AT&T Technologies, AT&T Technology versus communication workers. AT&T Technologies case, the principle applies with equal force to the threshold issue of arbitrability. That just as a court may not th decide the merits of the questions of the parties have delegated to an arbitrator, pay attention, the courts don't get to decide whatever the parties have said the arbitrator gets to decide. If the parties say that all matters are exclusively under the jurisdiction of the arbitrator, whether they're disputes or otherwise, the courts may not decide an arbitrability question that the parties have delegated to an arbitrator. This is what the Supreme Court has said since 1986. The courts know this. So each one of you, where the courts say that there is no contract, there is no arbitration clause, the party didn't agree, the court doesn't get to do that. The court has no jurisdiction. Supreme Court has made that clear. Now, what you need to know is that yes, the courts will rule against you because they know you have to appeal. You know, the chances of the Supreme Court taking your appeal are slim to none. So that's why they do it. Now notice this, Archer of Archer and White Sales, they make this argument. They say the courts presumably should decide frivolous questions that have been delegated to the arbitrator. And this is what the Supreme Court says as regards to whether or not the courts can take it upon themselves to decide a matter that has been delegated to an arbitrator. Yet, we have already rejected that argument. When the party's contracts assign a matter to arbitration, the court may not, not should not, the court may not resolve the merits of the dispute even if the court thinks that a party's claims on the merits are frivolous. So too would arbitrability. So again, ladies and gentlemen, on the issue as to the arbitrator and the arbitrator's issuance of an award, if the contract, and many of the contracts do say this, that the arbitrator has exclusive jurisdiction to resolve any and all disputes, then a person has the right to bring the dispute that they are bringing forth to the arbitrator for review. What is the dispute in this instance? That the other party has failed to comply with the arbitration award. Why would a party do this? Well, if you're going for, like I did, tax credits, because that was my goal. I wasn't trying to get my awards confirmed. I didn't need to get my awards confirmed. Go back and read IRS Tax Topic 453, the second to the last paragraph. It simply says you do not need to go to court if you have an outstanding debt. Well, an arbitration award is an outstanding debt. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to beg the government for credits. The credits are automatically given to me once I document the debt, which is what I did. And this is what I'm telling many of you, that if you want to accumulate tax credits and you want to do it the correct way, then you do it the correct way. You follow the procedures. You follow the procedures. A lot of people are not following the procedures. A lot of people are not following the procedures. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to suggest you do is go to the following website. A1Cells.org. Ladies and gentlemen, A1Cells.org deals specifically with an alternative dispute resolution and a remedy for each of you who has an arbitration award where the party has not complied with the arbitration award. They, if it does turn out the party hasn't complied, will issue for $125, that is because there needs to be a violation of arbitration order, it needs to be uh, a fee charge. They can't just issue an award. The law requires that there be a transaction. Why? Because if there wasn't a transaction, it would be considered as a favor or a gift. If it's a favor or a gift, somebody loses. And usually both you and the arbitrator. So, A1 Sales is the arbitration association that handles that. And they're located at 
a the number one sales.org a1sales.org ladies and gentlemen if you have an arbitration award and you are trying to achieve credits then this is where you go this is how you accomplish the credits so a1sales.org you will find that the information is there the application is there and all you have to do is fill out the dispute please review the website for information a1sales.org thank you ladies and gentlemen I will spend the next minute and a half explaining the credits well probably the next four minutes we'll go to 15 minutes on this video here's how the credits work let's say in my case and I will tell you my case on three separate occasions, the United States government through its agencies has arrested my person held me in jail for greater than six years in total and then released me as if everything was okay despite violating every single right they could possibly violate and I allowed it why how else am I supposed to get the customary 1.6 million dollars a day as established by the Trazavant case which went to federal court which was by a jury and no decision made by a jury shall be overturned in any other court that went all the way to federal court and they held it to be binding they held the decision of that jury to be binding so with that being the case since he for 23 minutes was deemed to have had his due process rights violated and was awarded what is the equivalent of 1.6 million dollars per day then I have the right under equal protection of law to the same multiply that 1.6 million dollars a day times 10 that's the total number of years that they have violated my rights and I've documented that that's why I ended up with plus other situations and circumstances and other contracts that were sent out I sent out a total of 17 different contracts ladies and gentlemen there are over 60 different respondents to my 17 different contracts now these were not contracts where I just decided to put somebody's name on it and make some outlandish amount on there no these were contracts that I legitimately had with someone and I sent it to them and they each and every one did not respond within the allotted time as prescribed in the contract by not responding and they had a duty to respond then they committed conduct and or performance because the contract says if they had a duty to respond and they failed to respond that will be construed as conduct under the terms of the contract and it would mean that they were stopped from challenging the agreement from that point forward that's where we are ladies and gentlemen so we had each of the arbitrations awards presented to arbitrators I was not the arbitrator it went to private independent arbitrators and these were federal arbitrators not just any arbitrator because when you're operating under the United States Arbitration Act you are a federal arbitrator so these were federal arbitrators that rendered these decisions the award was issued it was sent to the other parties 90 days went by they did not challenge the award the law only gives them 90 days to challenge the award because they didn't challenge the award within 90 days they lose any and all claims so I don't have to go to court to get it confirmed at that point the award is mine the debt is well documented no one can take the debt away so I proceed to file it on my taxes as uncollectible since they haven't paid well what if I want to go back to the arbitrator and say hey Oh, all of these awards add up to this much I want some more money I could but I'm not greedy and I'm not doing that as I said most of the credits that I received I donated it to the TTOPP organization that was the inference from the very beginning that it was going to go to that organization an organization that was well established in 2018 this was a plan ladies and gentlemen so now that I write it off on my taxes the very same as that young lady did do I do it all at once of course not again it's not about greed it's about following the law and documentation I really do hope this information helps you 
And thank you once again for paying attention. Have a good day.